number 701. So, I know that times are bleak, but we do have the hope of heaven. And it's not exactly, we're not exactly ready, maybe, but it'll be okay. share with you um, our scripture for today. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. This section we recognize as the Beatitudes. And I'm reading from today's English version. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn, God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble, they will receive what God has promised. Happy are those who are great, whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others, God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart, they will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you, persecute you, and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who live before you were persecuted. Here ends the reading, and we thank God for these words of life. 
Well, it is a pleasure to be with you today. Um, as you were told, I once was pastor at Barrow. I retired from there. I live in Decatur with my wife, Susan. Um, and I do public supply at a number of churches. And one thing I uh, uh, have discovered about public supply is when the pastor is gone, the sheep will stray. So I know there's not as many people here as there would be ordinarily because some of the sheep have strays. They think since the pastor's gone, they can be gone too. Um, there's an old story um, about uh, a country preacher who showed up uh, at the church and uh, there was only one person there, uh, an old farmer. And the country preacher said, well, what should we do? There's just you and me. And, and the, the farmer says, well, you know, when I go out to feed the cattle, if only one cow shows up, I feed him. And so the minister thinks, okay. So he launches into the service. He, he preaches his sermon with gusto and passion. And uh, then at the end of the service, he asks the farmer, well, you know, how was it? And the old farmer says, well, when I go to feed the cattle and only one cow shows up, I don't give them the whole load. <laughs> so, we'll give you some of the load here. Do you want to be happy? There is something within us as human beings which yearns and hungers for happiness. The founding fathers of this country as they pondered the possibilities of a new nation and new people, wrote that human beings are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's interesting that they called it the pursuit of happiness. They were right to do so because happiness does seem to be very elusive. We grasp it for a moment, but like a bird, it, it flies away. Perhaps this is why many people become cynical and they say that it's not possible to be happy because one never seems to be able to, to hold on to their happiness. Jesus understood this deep yearning for happiness and he actually taught about happiness in many ways. Most of all, he told us where we can discover true happiness as he gave us the Beatitudes. We usually recognize the Beatitudes because they begin with the word blessed or blessed, right? Now the word blessed does not mean that God pats us on the head and tells us that we are good boys and girls. It means something very different. The Today's English Version, which I read today, translates uh, the word as happy. And that maybe helps us to get a little closer to the real meaning that Jesus had. Because Jesus was trying to teach us that there's a kind of blessedness, a kind of happiness, which we can experience as Christians that cannot be destroyed and is completely untouchable from the outside. Jesus is telling us that there is a real joy to be found from which sorrow, loss, pain, and grief are all powerless to take away. One of the reasons that this joy which Jesus teaches about is indestructible is that it is a joy we just discover on the inside, not from the outside. How many people today think that plenty of money, a nice house, a nice car, and a big family will make them happy. I mean, those sound like good things. But these are outside things. Every one of these things can be taken away from us. And then where is our happiness? Where is our joy? Instead, Jesus teaches us how to construct our happiness and joy from the inside out. So let's look at each beatitude and see how we may find our true happiness. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
To be poor in spirit means to realize that we are really, totally, and utterly helpless in life. And when we realize this, then we are ready and able to put our full trust in God. And we're, when we're able to, to, to trust God totally, completely, in that moment of total trust, we have found heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. To mourn means many things. It can mean the bitterest sorrow that life can bring. It can also mean the sadness we feel when we see all the suffering in the world. And it's not hard to see the suffering in the world, is it? And it can mean the sorrow we may feel for our own sin and our own brokenness. Jesus tells us that when our hearts are broken from terrible loss or the world's suffering or from our own sin, that out of that sorrow, we will find the love and joy of God. Sorrow leads to God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now the word meek here does not mean that we are doormats for everyone to walk on. By meekness, Jesus is teaching about the ability to practice self-control. It is the ability to have our passions, our instincts, and our impulses under a disciplined control. It means, for example, that like Jesus, we can be angry at the right time and never angry at the wrong time. It means we are under self-control, or better stated, we are under God control because we realize our own ignorance and weakness about this. Those who practice true meekness will be leaders among the people and they will indeed inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. To hunger and thirst has to do with desire. Whenever we strongly desire something, we will do whatever is necessary to get it. Some human desires get us into trouble. The desire for money can lead to theft or embezzlement or whatever. The desire for power can lead to manipulation. The desire for sexual passion can lead to sexual exploitation. But Jesus says when we desire goodness, that which is totally good. And if we de desire that goodness with a hunger and thirst, we will be satisfied. If we desire goodness this much, we will find it. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. To be merciful means the ability to be sympathetic and understanding with other people. We kind of know that. It's like the old saying about walking in another person's shoes. To be merciful is to look inside others, to see their struggle and their pain, and to understand. To be merciful is not to look at the outside or at the behaviors. To be merciful helps us to be tolerant and forgiving. Jesus says, those who are merciful in this way will find that others will do the same for them. And in this way, we all become like Christ, who we all know was merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. To be pure in heart is to have pure motives. Sometimes our motives can be selfish or even mean-spirited. Jesus says it's not so much what we do, but the reason we do it, which is important. Those whose motives are absolutely pure will someday see God because they have become like God in their hearts. Blessed are the peace 
peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. To be a peacemaker is to be one who strives for peace and the highest good in themselves and between others. Jesus says that when we act as peacemakers, we are sons and daughters of God because we are actually doing God's work. Finally, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so men persecuted the prophets who were, who were before you. How can we find joy or happiness in persecution? Perhaps, when we suffer for the sake of Christ, we know that we are being true to our faith, and there is a kind of satisfaction in that, which nothing or no one can take away. When we suffer persecution for Christ, we are taking on Christ's work. We are doing the work of the cross. We are helping to overcome evil, and we are helping to redeem the world. To do so is to participate in a great event. This is the hardest beatitude to accept and to live. But for those who suffer, Persecution for Christ's sake it is an opportunity for true greatness, a greatness that will always be ours. In the Beatitudes, Jesus is teaching us about true happiness, a happiness that is built on the inside with the help of God's Holy Spirit as we follow Christ. It is a happiness which is eternal because it is literally who we are and who we have become in Christ. The road to happiness is most difficult, which we can all see, and it will take all our lives or maybe even longer to get there. And yet, it's worth the struggle. It's worth the struggle to win this happiness because it is the joy in Christ which is the greatest joy and which is actually the experience of heaven itself. Praise Jesus for the Beatitudes and for what they teach us and for what they challenge us to do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Looks like uh, we're ready for the closing hymn. Number 451. We got the PowerPoint up. We, can, we, don't, we don't have to use the hymnals. So, uh, stand. yeah, I'd like to invite you to stand as we join in singing.
since we have such hope, live and act with boldness. Love and serve the Lord in the freedom of the Spirit. And now receive this blessing. May the glory of the Lord shine upon you. The word of the Lord live within you. And the Spirit of the Lord give you peace. Amen.